This video is going to show you how to run a Friedman's test in JASP. A Friedman's test is essentially the non-parametric equivalent to a one-way within subjects and over. So it's when we have a dependent variable that is repeatedly measured in the same participants under three or more different conditions. If there's only two conditions, we could just use a Wilcoxon test instead. The example data um, is looking at people's perceptions of how good Beatles songs are, particularly Beatles songs on the White Album. Um, for this data, what we did, we randomly chose a song by each of the Beatles, so Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison and Ringo from the White Album. So the Paul McCartney song, everybody who was played, I've chosen at random, was uh, Blackbird. The John Lennon song that everyone was played was Happiness is a Warm Gun. The George Harrison song everyone was played was Long 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 and the Ringo song was Don't Pass Me By. So participants had to listen to all four of these songs in a counterbalanced order and then just basically had to rate how good they thought the songs were on a scale of one to five with five being the highest score they could give that song. So this data is ordinal data because it is just a simple Likert scale, an attitude scale from 1 to 5. We've also got a very small sample here as well. Also the distribution of the data is skewed in some of those conditions. I won't go into assessing skewness and things like that in any detail in this guide. So we want to see if there is an overall effect of Beatles song, which of the Beatles wrote it. On people's opinions on how good that song is and if there is we'd want to do some post hoc tests to look at that. In order to run this analysis we will go to ANOVA and then repeated measures ANOVA. So although we don't want to run an ANOVA the way JASP works is you choose your statistical test according to the design. So in SPSS you have to go through and choose the statistical test that you want straight away so you, in SPSS you get to analyze then non-parametric tests then legacy dialogues and so on so we've got a repeated measures design and we've got three or more conditions so therefore we have we go through the repeated measures ANOVA menu system so we select that then you can see what we've got is we've got our repeated measures factors repeated measures cells between subjects factors that's if you want to do a mixed ANOVA We'd go to this menu, this menu and we'd add our between subjects variable here and we could add covariates if we wished. So the first thing we need to do is say what our repeated measures factors are. So this is basically what is your independent variable name. So we can call that Beetle. And then it asks you to label your levels. So these are the levels of the independent variable. So we'll just call it Paul. John. George. And Ringo. Now if we had a complex design, this is where we'd put in our next factor, wherever that variable may be. It may be if you're interested in the Beatles, we may want to do it by album or something like that but we're just going to be looking at a simple one here and we can keep adding levels if there's other beetles that we could add to it. The next thing we want to do then, so we've told we've got a repeated measure factor called beetle and these are the different levels to it. Then what we need to do is tell JASP which of the columns of our data set relate to each of these cells. So the way I've labelled it, it's pretty straightforward. So we can actually just select all these and then block and click them across so we've got Paul, matches up with Paul, John with John, George with George, Ringo to Ringo. So we basically set up, told just what our design is and you'll see it automatically will compute a repeated measures and over. But we're not going to look at this because we know due to the nature of our data that we should actually be doing a Friedman's test instead. So in order to do this we need to go right down to the bottom here and it's got non-parametrics we select this 
And then we've got factors, repeated measure factor, optional grouping factor, and simply all we have to do is click across our repeated measures factor here, and therefore it gives us a Friedman's test, which is looking at the effect of beetle, the main effect of beetle on song ratings. And as you can see, we've got a significant main effect of beetle on the song ratings. And we could just write this up accordingly. We could just say there's a significant main effect of Beetle on song quality ratings, and we'd report our chi squared statistic, our degrees of freedom, with the p value as well. Also, a really nice feature that JASP has it gives us Kendall's W. So Kendall's W is just a way of deriving an effect size for a Friedman's test. So that's a few different ways you could compute these different forms of effect size for even this test. With regards to Kendall's W, you've actually seen um, different criteria for cutoffs for Kendall's W, because it's actually a measure of concordance. So if you can find some papers here and there that will um, give you slightly different cutoffs for levels of agreement. But generally speaking, we could talk about Kendall's W in terms of um, 0.1 as a small effect, 0.3 a modern effect, and above 0.5 is a large effect. We can report our Friedman's test along with our estimate of effect size. Another excellent feature that we have in JASP, again, that's somewhat lacking in SPSS, we can actually ask for Conover's post hoc tests. So this is a post hoc test for non-parametric data. So we can click on this, and I'll just scroll this across a little bit now, and it gives us a series of postdoc comparisons, allowing us to compare our beetles together. Another great feature that this does that SPSS doesn't do is it just gives you all the comparisons once. SPSS will give you everything twice and makes the table overly complicated. So what conclusions can we draw from this data? So the first set we've got, this, is, this line will be Paul versus John, Paul versus George, Paul versus Ringo. And this column here will refer to Paul for the first three, and then it refers to John, George, and Ringo. So what do these statistics tell us? Well, the song quality ratings between Paul and John are not significantly different. You'll notice as well, it gives us three different p-values. It gives you a standard p-value, it gives you a bomb for any corrected p-value, and the whole p-value as well. Whether you do a correction is a decision you'd make before you were to do your analysis anyway. It's a decision that's sort of not driven by any effects that you're seeing here. I'm just going to talk in terms of these uncorrected p-values for the sake of this example. So you can see there's no statistically significant difference between Paul and John. Between Paul and George, there is a statistically significant difference. And as you can see, the song quality of George is rated higher than the song quality of Paul. So people are rating long, long, long. That's a better song than Blackbird. And if we compare Paul and Ringo, again, we've got a statistically significant difference here. And people are rating Don't Pass Me By as a better song than Blackbird. So if we move on to the comparisons with John, so we've already done the Paul McCartney, John Lennon comparison. So John compared to George, Again, what we see here, people are rating the George Harrison song of Long, 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 Better Than Happiness is a Warm Gun. And John versus Ringo. Again, we can see that the Ringo song is rated better as well. Sicily significant difference here. And finally, George and Ringo. No significant difference between the quality of the two songs whatsoever. And again, we just write this up. Accordingly, so we could tell the reader we've done Conover's postdoc comparisons, and these are revealed that Ringo's song was rated better than both the Paul McCartney song and the John Lennon song, although it did not differ from the George Harrison song. The George Harrison song was also rated better than the Paul McCartney and John Lennon song. Lennon and McCartney did not differ. So we could ask for a few other things. Descriptive plots, which we could have Beetle on our horizontal axis and we could get 
Oh, confidence interval. It also shows our pattern results. See the George and the Ringo song are rated better, more variance in the Ringo song than the George song, which is rated slightly higher there. So we can see the pattern of results quite clearly there. Under additional options, we could ask for our descriptors to put see some descriptive statistics, just gives us our mean and an SD. It may be that you'd be wishing to do your given mean in a range instead of other form of statistics due to the nature of this data. And you could just ask for that under the descriptive statistics menu if you wanted. So if you want to do that, we could just go to descriptives and descriptive statistics. We could just click across our four variables. And go to statistics. So we may want to ask for a range. We could have a median. We could also get a mode as well. So then we can see for the median for Paul McCartney and John Lennon is three. For George Harrison, Ringo is four. The mode for Paul McCartney is four. Three for John Lennon, four for George Harrison, and five for Ringo. And you can see the range is four for the mall, apart from George Harrison's song bit.